Okay, you guys, so now that we are starting up our uh, hypothesis testing, that we're kind of finally starting to get into the real um, kind of meat of our statistical class right now, what I've got now is this flowchart. So I'm going to kind of walk us through this flowchart, and this flowchart really is the roadmap to the entire second half of this class. So let me go ahead and blow this up and show you what we're dealing with. Okay, so it might look big, it might look overwhelming, there's a lot of equations here, and, and there are, but if we follow the roadmap always from the top, it's going to lead us exactly where we need to go. Uh, I'm, we're going to keep this as pretty small, and then as we move along and we learn more parts of our hypothesis testing, I'll show us more and more paths uh, for how we get down to the correct equations. Because like one of the hard things about statistics is not necessarily the math. A lot of times the math is pretty easy, but there's so many different equations. The hard part is, is which equation is appropriate for our different circumstances. And this flowchart is trying to help us out with where should we go and what equation should we use. Okay, so the very first question that we ask ourselves is, what am I testing? And we've been working on this basically from day one about trying to determine, are we dealing with numerical data or are we dealing with categorical data? Uh, you can ignore these red arrows for right now. Uh, there's some shortcuts for later on for some more complicated uh, statistical methods. But right now we're just curious, are we dealing with numerical data? Are we talking about the mean of something? Are we dealing with cate categorical data? And are we dealing with some proportions? So right now, since we're doing just one sample testing, I'm going to show you how to get to the correct spots for each of our tests. All right, so first things first, we're doing numerical data. And then we'll say, OK, how many populations are we dealing with? Or how many samples are we going to be taking? So right now we're only going to be dealing with one sample hypothesis testing all right so we know that we're just going down this one sample we've only got one group that we're we're measuring and we're going to move on down and then we ask our next question all right our next question is is it normal remember we have to be able to um to satisfy the demands of the central limit theorem theorem for this testing so it either has to be yes it is normal or no but n is greater than i should put an equal sign here greater than or equal to uh, 30. so if that is true then by the central limit theorem uh, we can get down to this next step now this next step is our next question we've asked ourselves this question already when we were working on our confidence intervals and the question is this do you know the population standard deviation that's sigma or was the standard devi deviation given as a part of the sample that's s so if we know the standard deviation um, that the that the standard deviation was given before the sample was taken that's our sigma like if it was gotten from previous research or a big paper we got sigma now on the flip side if the standard deviation was calculated from the sample that was chosen either i give you the raw data and you have to calculate out the standard deviation or if it the problem just gives you the summary data then we're dealing with s and then we can come down and check it out we have reached our dead ends and we know which ones we're supposed to do okay so on the left this is the one sample z test for a mean where we know the population standard deviation and linked with this is the confidence interval so and in here we see that hey we've already done this before it's written slightly different uh, it's written within a mathematical notation but it says that mu and then this weird little e looking thing means contained within so mu is contained within this is our confidence interval so just another way that, that we can write our confidence interval all right over here if we have a one sample t test for a mean that means that we only know the uh, sample standard deviation and then linked with it as well we have the confidence interval down here and check it out we've already done this equation this is our x bar plus or minus t n minus one for the degrees of freedom remember that and then we have our sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Once again, mu is contained within here. And that's how we get to our correct testing equations for if we're doing a one sample uh, test for a mean, whether we've got uh, the population standard deviation or if we have the sample standard deviation. Okay, so let's back out and let's start at the top again. So let's say, what am I testing? Let's say we're dealing with, um, with proportions or we're dealing with categorical data. So we'll go down. How many? Right now, we're still only just dealing with one. So we're going to go down to this question of, is it normal? 
Okay, so our question is, is it normal? And look, we only have the options with our sample size. Remember, when we're dealing with the categorical data, there is no cop-out of saying that the original distribution is normal. Um, we have to ensure that the sample size is large enough. And for our class, we need 15 with the trait of interest and 15 without the trait of interest. It's a little conservative. Other books you'll see maybe 10 or even 5. Uh, but for our class, we've made that cutoff at 15. Okay. So if it's not, we're stuck, and that's all that I'm expecting you guys to do is just basically stop there. Um, now we can go then, okay, so by our central limit theorem, we've got this one sample z-test for a proportion. And now we have our hypothesis testing for our proportion, and we've got the confidence interval for our one sample proportion. So... Mike, just real quickly, this little flow chart, as long as we start at the top and we systematically go through and answer each of our questions, it should lead us down to the question that, or to the sets of equations that our question requires. So I really hope that we take the time to look at this and really work on being fluent with this. I will let us use this on our tests. Uh, because I think that it's so helpful that to just have this flow chart of figuring out what am I supposed to do, especially since we've got all of these equations um, kind of being thrown at us. So anyhow, that's our first intro to this uh, spreadsheet on Prezi. Good luck.